Jayant, good to see you again. Thanks, Thanks for joining for, us. Thanks for having me, Luke. Uh, Jayant, the last time we spoke, um, you put forth a very bearish case on India. Now, that was uh, about one year ago. Has that view changed since? Oh, it has. Uh, things look much worse than I thought they would be. Um, as you know, um, Narendra Modi demonetized 86% of Indian currency. Since then, he has added a new kind of sales tax system on the country. Everything has been failing. Terrorism is up hugely in Kashmir. India and China are, have a huge border conflict right now. These are the things I did not think he would do. Uh, and this has created a major crisis in the country. The economic growth, which actually was not too bad, 6 to 7 percent, is in my view now negative uh, from what I see. Because by demonetizing the currency, people did not have cash to do transact businesses. Businesses started dying. People started getting laid off. Uh, just a vicious cycle has been set in in the society today. Uh, things look much worse than they were earlier. Well, the story was that the impetus for, for demonetizing was to reduce corruption and uh, terrorism. Um, uh, has, that, um, has that been the case in India? Uh, well, both things are worse today because uh, a normal Indian citizen is now very scared of the police and the government. So, in general, he's now paying twice as much bribes than what he used to pay earlier. And uh, even for people, outsiders, now you probably hear more stories about Kashmir in the media than you used to before. Terrorism has grown up hugely in the country, in Kashmir particularly, and Kashmir might be out of the control of Indian government already. The people have revolted in that country. You cannot control corruption by restricting money supply. You control corruption by dealing with the regulations, reducing regulations, making people's life easier. You don't control terrorism by reduction of money supply. You reduce terrorism by understanding the social problems and dealing with those problems. Uh, and even if money supply could have dealt with this problem in the short term, which it did not, it, was, it would have only been a short-term solution. Well, the Indian government was very happy to regulate uh, money supply in terms of gold, right? Uh, what, what, what would you say about that? Uh, they have completely failed. Gold consumption in India has gone up, and gold, Indians now increasingly hold gold in Dubai, Hong Kong, Singapore, and elsewhere. I don't even know where they are holding their gold now. But people now distrust the government so much that they would not even go inside their own, own house or bury it in their house. They now prefer to own it outside the country because they have, for the first time, started thinking that instead of burying the gold in my own house, I could get it at 10 or 12 percent cheaper than what the price is in India and store it in a safe property right respecting jurisdiction of, let's say, Dubai, Hong Kong, and Singapore. Are you seeing this even on the ground with, like, let's say, the retail investor, or is this mainly the sophisticated investors in India? Well, only sophisticated people can do this, and that's why they are moving their gold and wealth outside the country. Within India, gold consumption has gone up among non-sophisticated people. Most of the gold, even today, is bought by poor people. And the only choice they have is to buy physical metal within the country. They don't really have the concept of passport or Hong Kong or Dubai. What kind of premiums do they pay on top of uh, gold? Gold uh, premium, I checked uh, a day or two back, is about 10% over the international price, which is about 10% less than what it should be after you adjust all the cost of bringing gold, import taxes, and GST. Which pretty much means, Luke, that most of the gold entering the country is entering via smuggling. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you do the math backwards, that makes sense. There's yeah. actually, if you do the math, you understand that there's no way you can do business in India if you pay your taxes properly. Everyone who is dis doing business in the country <laughs> is avoiding tax payments. So, so do you think, I mean, for most companies that deal with gold in that case, uh, they go through the official route for just a small portion of your business. 
And for the rest of them, you would look into the black market for that. Exactly. So for the window dressing purposes, they have to buy enough gold officially that it, they can keep their papers clean. Even corrupt bureaucrats have to do this thing. So even though everyone in the system is corrupt, because they have to look innocent in front of each other, otherwise they would get entangled in themselves into the system, they have to keep, they have to window dress the system. How do you see the role of gold kind of evolving? Um, are you touching that a little bit already with the demonetization, but how do you foresee it evolving even further in the future? Well, I think, you know, Luke, interesting thing is in the last 30 years, India had an economic growth. And because India had an economic growth, people were, were starting to think about investing in factories and manufacturing and trading. Production. Production. And that is the right thing to do. Any excess you should have, you should put as much of that possible into investing rather than in non-investing, non-growth growing products. Like the financing and all of that, right? Like, yeah. And gold. Yeah. I mean, gold does not grow with yeah, time. That's true. However, when you destroy the industry, which is what Modi has done in the last six to eight months, he has destroyed the economic growth, he has destroyed the industry, People are very scared about investing in the country. Businessmen and factories owners tell me that they want to close their factories for two reasons. Firstly, regulations have increased hugely, which means bribes that they have to pay has gone up. And the second problem is that by creating all this, forcing companies to go digital increases their cost of operating which means that they have become uneconomical. Okay. It does not work, and these people will eventually move their wealth outside the country. Now, since, since uh, Modi has done that, has there been um, an increase in outside investments flowing into India, outside money? Well, it is indeed possible. I don't know for sure because the, there, there are two kinds of figures you see in the media. One figure is paid by the Indian government, uh, and you see some of those kind of articles, and you can see that, you know, things, you, you will see articles in international media which show that India is now getting more foreign investment than China is, which is completely false. Uh, they have created subsets, subsets of FDI, and then they have tried to look, show that India is doing better than China is. I mean, India is nothing compared to China. China is a four times, five times bigger economy, and China gets about four, five times more foreign investment. Okay. Now, in the last six to eight months, I would not be surprised if foreign investment has increased into India, and this can happen because uh, people in America, and here I see in this conference, some of the institutional investors are very bullish about India. Yeah. They think Modi is doing exactly the right thing he should be doing. Uh, and they are the people who might be sending their money to India. Eventually, they will lose. Yeah, because what you're seeing is really what's happening on the ground. You go there, you speak to the businessmen and the local community, what's happening there, right? Yeah. Look, I have traveled a lot in India. I have written about 20 articles big long articles explaining the situation. I've traveled, I've interviewed, uh, and I've experienced what's happening. Uh, one interesting thing, Luke, food prices even today, eight months after demonetization, is half as much as they were eight months back. Oh, wow. Now, imagine, it's good for my mom, because she only pays half as much money now, but why have the food prices fallen so much? There's only one reason. Poor people are not buying food anymore, which means a lot of poor people are going hungry now. That's a, wow. So that's a disaster that has been imposed on that country. In your opinion, what does the government really have to do right now to clean up the mess? Well, they have to decentralize. India has to get rapidly and aggressively decentralized. Right now, they are over-centralizing the country. They are doing exactly what they should not be doing. India should be decentralized, the tax system should be decentralized, the governance of the country should be decentralized. Even very organized and educated countries like European Union, for example, which is not a country, of course, but you'd see that it's failing. Even among those people who are very well-educated, 
big organizations start to fail. So you must decentralize, particularly in a country like India, where 50% to 80% of the people struggle to write their own names. Yeah, I guess like the, the, the thought is usually that uh, you know, there's so much potential for India if you know, people could start working together, could start speaking the same language, could start agreeing on things and start uh, adhering to the same kind of rules. And that's the case for perhaps a, a central government. But I guess what you're seeing on the ground, it's still it's the same old thing, except that people's distrust over the government is increasing more and more from that. Well, people's distrust is increasing by the day, but at the same time, people are hypocritically interested in government doing all these things as well. What do you so, mean by that? So two things are happening. Salaried middle class, which gets taxed, thinks that informal sector and businesses don't pay their fair share of taxes. So they want government to impose more restrictions on these people. The second problem is that Modi promised three years back that he would deposit about 20,000 American dollar into every Indian's account once he had caught all the corrupt money from the system. <laughs> now, <laughs> so there, there's a greed behind it as well. Okay. So people are with the government in many ways, and I have no inhibitions in admitting that Modi has huge support in the country right now, which will make the situation much, much worse because people are on a suicidal mission with him. But a very simple thing, Indian GDP per capita is less than 2,000 American dollar, which means that if Modi did deposit money into people's account, it would be equivalent to 10 years of Indian GDP. I mean, people should have done some basic math before he agreed, they agreed with him. Yeah, wow, wow. On that note, you know, thank you so much once again for speaking with us. Ah, thanks for the opportunity, Luke. <laughs> it's always great seeing you. Thank you. Thank you.